Hey everyone, I'm Rob and I'm an account executive here at Incident IQ. Incident IQ is a platform that features help ticketing, asset management, and facilities maintenance tools designed exclusively for K-12 school districts. One of the questions I hear quite often with prospective districts is what does it look like to get up and running? We hear war stories about previous implementations with other solutions. Today we're going to talk about just how easy that process is with Incident IQ. Now, thankfully, I'm joined by Sarah McElmurray, who's one of our implementation experts, who's going to outline that process for us. We're also going to hear anecdotes from a current Incident IQ customer about his onboarding experience. So, Sarah, as we dive in here, can you outline exactly what we're going to be covering today? Sure. Today, we're going to talk about how simple it's going to be to get your district up and running with Incident IQ. Our implementation process is broken down into three unique sections. The first thing we need to tackle is getting your user and asset data into Incident IQ. The second thing we'll tackle is configuring the site to best suit your needs. And then finally, we will tackle training your team on this solution. Outstanding, Sarah. So, so to kick us off, why don't we hone in on that first step, the importation of existing data into Incident IQ. So the first thing we want to tackle are pulling in all of your users at the district. Luckily, Incident IQ has a variety of really robust, easy to use API integrations that make pulling in those users very simple. We work with things like Google SSO, Microsoft Azure, things like that. Not only are those users going to be now within Incident IQ, these integrations are also going to allow your end users to quickly log into this platform using that single sign-on technology. Um, in addition to our SSO integrations, we also have integrations with student information systems that pulls in supplemental data about your users, things like their grade level and their student ID and their courses. Awesome, Sarah. So now users are in the system. We synced up with an SSO and an SIS to automa automate that process. Now, what does it look like for assets? We integrate with all of the leading MDMs. Uh, many of the customers I work with really like leveraging our integration with Google Admin Console. Not only with this integration are we able to automatically pull in that asset data, which is really helpful because it's happening seamlessly, we also have really robust write-back capabilities, which ensures that the data is correct both in Google Admin and in Incident IQ. Outstanding, Sarah. And, and just to add to that a little bit, we've got all of this information feeding in automatically from the MDM or from the SSO or from the SIS, but we can supplement that data using our CSV importer tool. So Incident IQ allows you to just drag a spreadsheet uh, into our importer and it will prompt you to map those fields into Incident IQ fields. So if you know a lot of districts I work with have all this data existing in spreadsheets, we can ingest that data and in combination with whatever we're pulling in automatically, we get a full picture of our asset user location data. So uh, you've heard Sarah and I talk about it a little bit. Let's hear from Michael Carter, who's the director of IT at Coweta Public Schools in Oklahoma. He's gonna talk a little bit about that importation process that we're outlining. I'll tell you one of the fantastic things about uh, this product is not only were we able to control that asset import, um, it, you know, the manual imports, um, you know, certainly the Google um, having that tie in directly, awesome. Um, SIS, we have PowerSchool, that information uh, tying in for our student and staff information, super powerful and easy. So Sarah, now I want to focus in on step two of the implementation, which is the configuration. So we're going to start with that end user experience. And we're gonna configure Incident IQ so that your teachers and your staff can quickly, easily, and accurately submit their help tickets. Then on the admin side, we're gonna leverage our rules engine to set up automations so that when those help desk tickets come in, they're routed to the correct agent or to the correct team of agents. Outstanding. So let's hear again from Michael Carter at Coweta, who's gonna talk a little bit about the workflow customization or configuration the issue types that were already in there for the types of things that you would want to turn in for tablets, for Chromebooks, and for things of that nature. Uh, that was super helpful uh, to us. And uh, um, it also helped me for, for the folks that were more change resistant to have people pause and take a look at, hey, this is what we already have here. Did we really need to recreate the wheel here? Or can we either use what's there 
or take what's there and change it just a little bit, which we were able to do for many things, um, and then be able to work from that. The ability to set a, a, a field, and we, and we all love this, uh, before you submitted a ticket, if it matched an FAQ or, or uh, it would um, have a... Um, what is it, a required field that uh, says, hey, did you read that FAQ before you could submit that ticket? I mean, and there are some great uh, opportunities for ticket deflection there, I think. So Sarah, one of my favorite things that Michael outlined there is how Incident IQ customers are not starting from scratch in generating their workflows. We give you out of the box workflows that are popular among our K-12 districts, and then you customize and tweak from there. And that's that configuration stage of implementation. So let's focus in on the final stage of implementation now, which is of course training. So after we've configured your site, our team is gonna host a live interactive training session for your team. After you're up and running, you guys are then gonna have access to the Incident IQ Academy, which is an amazing, robust online library with lots of both written and video content to help with that ongoing self-guided training. Outstanding. So not only are we hosting the live session, uh, but we've also got the academy for more ongoing support. We don't just train you and then turn you loose and say, figure it out from there. You can also lean into the Incident IQ community, which has become very, very popular, where districts share tips, best practices, what has worked very well for their district, so that you can actually hear from other Incident IQ customers who are using it successfully. The emphasis on the training portion of Incident IQ's implementation is to ensure that all Incident IQ users at every level are both comfortable and confident, not only when you go live, but of course on an ongoing basis as well. I mean, so for the uh, for our, our internal staff, and we're a small staff, we have uh, six people um, in the IT department here. It was a little bit lukewarm in that process, uh, but Allison during the onboarding uh, or the initial calls um, helped warm up that room and get that going. Um, just the interface, uh, once we once we could see our data in there and then be able to look at our data and, and pull up a serial number, pull up a staff, pull up a student, that's what changed the temperature of that room for my staff. Uh, and we're looking forward to it being a time saver versus um, what we're coming from, which is spreadsheets and access databases, uh, mind you, that no one wanted to keep track of. Um, this is something that will allow us to have better visibility, um, an easier interface, um, the reporting and the feedback um, of how we're doing personally, but also being able to report back uh, to principals about how their site is doing, their students are doing. I mean, there's just, there are so many implications um, and uh, opportunities beyond what you would get from an Excel spreadsheet <laughs> and an access database. So in short, Sarah, an Incident IQ implementation expert is going to be with you through each phase of implementation, the importation, the configuration, and the training. Exactly. Switching to Incident IQ is really easy. A lot of districts seem to think it's going to be a grueling, months-long process, when in reality, it's super simple to get started on a timeline that works for you. It's really just three simple steps, and then your district is up and running on a platform designed for K-12.